Okay, I had two horses come in in the last couple of days, both of them Palominos, one a mare, one a gelding. And according to the owners, one of them don't have any go and one of them don't have any stop. So this is the mare that don't have any stop. I'm going to work her today and see what we can figure out. Try to come up with a direction for her. A couple of things I noticed just right off hand. The owner said she keeps her head high, which doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily mean anything, but she's kind of weak in the back end, which can indicate that she's heavy on her front end, hollow in her back. And if a horse feels like they're going downhill, they will speed up. I don't know if that's her issue or not, but just looking at her, that's the first thing that comes to mind. She's actually a pretty, pretty good sized horse, pretty, pretty well muscled horse over most of her body, but she's a little weak right there. Now, she did, this horse is in her teens. She did have a baby not too long ago, which is also gonna play into it. That's going to get her, change her body up, which her changing her body from having the baby, of course, that's gonna change how she travels. That all, all of that plays together. So we're gonna saddle her up and see what we get. I wanted to kind of video the saddling up part just so we could, if she did anything, I could point it out. Both of the two horses that just came in, both Palominos, but they're both different breeds and neither one of them is a quarter horse. So I will uh, tell you what breed she is in the end, at the end of the video. Don't think I've done a video on this breed. Oh, seems to be saddling up okay. This, uh, according to the owner, she has a lot of riding time on her with her and with her previous owner. Not really sure what she was mainly used for previously. Might need to get a bigger girth. That's a problem that's going to have to be addressed. Don't bite me again. Don't really like to hit one, but when in this particular situation, I will. You don't want to make one head shy. If you're always slapping one, you're going to make it head shot. But let's talk about that a minute. Let's say you have a ruler, 12 inch old style wooden ruler. One is they won't get their face off of you. 12 is their head shot and you can't get your hands on them. Right in the middle at six is where you want to be. So think of what would make them head shot. Think of what will soften them if they are head shy to bring them one way up or down on that ruler. You want them at six. You don't want them where they won't take their face off of you. You don't want them just all over you. You don't want them head shy so you can't get your hands on them either. You want them in the middle. Think about what will put them in the middle. Think she might have. Did you learn anything? Now, I want to make, just note that I didn't, I don't think she has stomach ulcers. It's possible, but I don't think she does. Because when I was messing with her on her side, she didn't pin her ears then. She only pinned her ears when I got to girth in the saddle up part. Now, 
You have to use some experience there. A lot of people are going to say, well, get them scoped, run all kind of tests. You can spend thousands of dollars running tests just to rule out pain when all you need is just a little bit of experience and just look at the horse and make some deductive conclusions. Uh, you don't need to run thousands of dollars worth of tests to tell you you have an attitude problem. That's, that's ridiculous. Okay. Notice how much better her face is with that one slap. She understood that that wasn't acceptable. Her ears aren't pinned back like she's mad. Now I have what would be acceptable. You can't let that behavior just continue. You got to stop it right away. This is the first time I've gotten her out of the stall. This is the first time I've interacted with her. I'm not going to give her the chance to think that she might be in charge of me and control me and intimidate me. We're going to we're going to start off on the right foot from the beginning that I'm in charge and she's not going to intimidate me. Another thing we're going to talk about too, I, I, I think this is going to play into when we get in the saddle. If she doesn't trust the leader that's on her back. She's going to do different things to not do what's asked of her. I did a video a while back with the horse that was acting spooky because the rider wasn't being a leader. Might be that this horse isn't stopping, isn't steering because the rider isn't being the leader. I don't know. That's just something that kind of comes to mind while I'm saddling her up. When I get a new horse in, this is all the things that I'm watching that I'm thinking are possibilities so that I'll know how to handle her when we get on her back out there. I'm gonna start off putting my heavy snaffle bit on her. The owner was riding her in a snaffle and she told me that she switched, I believe, to a Kimberwick. Must be water she was holding in her mouth after breakfast. Now I got the saddle snug enough. Don't do it. Snug enough that it won't come off, won't fall off, but I'm watching her face. She actually seems like she learned something from that. Just being cautious. All right, now see how she's walking ahead of me. She's getting ahead of me. We're going to take charge right here. We're going to change directions. That's not going to be acceptable. I'm gonna go back that way. Ah, she's starting to lead a little better. Now notice my pace. I'm walking like I got some place to go, something to do. I'm not just kind of lollygagging around. I'm being a leader, I'm being in charge. Every time she gets in front of me, I'm going to change directions again. We're going to go out here. We're going to shut this gate. I 
I will eventually start telling her to back up, but right now I don't want to get into that fight with her. I want to establish some leadership going forward. Then we'll start doing some stopping and backing her up and some other things leading her around. She's snorting at everything out here. Might mean something, might not. We'll see. This is the first time she's been out here. Shut these gates down here. She's wanting to look around taking in. I want her to see what's out here. I want her to be okay with it. But she has to maintain speed and direction that I dictate. That's going to apply now. That's going to apply in the saddle. I've talked about that in a little bit in a couple of videos before. Cow horses are real looky. And if you try to stop that, you're just going to get in a fight with them. So I'm not going to try to stop her from looking around. I want her to be aware of what's out there, aware of what's going on. But she has to maintain the speed and direction that I dictate. Let's tighten the saddle a hole. Actually, that was a few holes. Hopefully that's tight enough to get on. She actually walking her and turning her around. She relaxed her muscles a lot. People use the term the horse sucked in air, but that's not actually what's happening. What's happening is they're flexing those muscles. They're tightening the muscles. And that's what makes them get bigger. And that's why you loosen the, or tighten the saddle. Horses that are experienced and used to being ridden, most all of them will do that, especially if you tighten the saddle quick all the time. Let's see what she's going to do when I go to get on. I don't said she didn't buck. She just didn't have much steering and didn't have any stop. sure my saddle is going to be tight enough but let's see you're not going to pull your head around and fight me again I'd really like for her to stay standing still until i get on so that's why i bounced my foot in the stirrup let's see if she was going to walk away I might need to do some lunging, some groundwork with her, but I really wanted to see exactly what I got to work with. All right, let's walk again. Good girl. Could have swung my leg over and sat down that time, but I didn't. I wanted to reward her for standing. Let's do it one more time. I'll swing my leg over and sit down this time. I mean, you could, you could make an argument for every horse that come in, they needed to be started from the ground and basically started over. Uh -huh. She didn't have her mouth open that time. And basically need to be worked from the ground and completely started over. And some I might get, I do that. But I try to only do that when it's necessary because if I'm starting a horse over, that's training time that could be used to do something else. 
Yeah, how she's. They don't really seem too concerned about me. Looking around at everything else, I might need to take the girth up on the other side. I think tighten another hole. She don't seem too concerned about me, but she's also not really listening to me, not paying me any attention. She's pulling on my hands, pulling down on my hands. She wants to get slack from me so she can go where she wants to go, do what she wants to do. The owner did tell me that she is normally pastured at home with cows. So I really don't expect her to have much reaction to them. That turn, you notice her front end stopped and her back end stepped around that needs to be changed she has all her weight on her front end and her back end is not going to engage that's going to create kind of rolls when she goes forward that's going to create the feeling that she feels like she's going downhill i didn't ride her with spurs uh -uh. didn't ride her with spurs today and I wasn't sure if she might run off with me and I didn't want to spur her on accident. Today was mostly about seeing what I got. Seeing what I got to work with and come up with a plan. I'm going to turn her to the wall. Ask her to go. Ask her to go. Ask her to go. She really got heavy on the front end there. I don't know if you can, if the microphone's picking it up or not, but she's still snorting a lot. She's looking around a lot. She's wanting to just ignore me. Wanting to, yep, I turn you into the block. This is a horse that's gonna need a lot of stuff thrown out here on the ground. I talked about that in some other vid videos what that's about I uh when there's stuff laying on the ground to give him something to look at steer around give him a reason to go and do things that I'm asking them to do that kind of helps get them looking and paying attention and it also gives them a reason why I'm steering them around and doing stuff and that we're I'm not just pulling on them for no reason she actually has a pretty decent speed walk here. I was expecting a lot faster, but how I let her out of the barn kind of worked as a an introduction to her. And I'm doing I'm doing lots of really little things here that are really big. So I made all those little circles leading out of the barn. I'm doing a lot of turning here, changing directions, getting her attention. You notice I haven't asked her to stop yet. All I've done is change directions. Go over here, go over here, turn into the wall a couple times. She rolls her body weird when she turns. Let's ask her to go a little bit faster and let's see what we get. I'm gonna come around and go faster coming down that wall over there. <laughs> She's pulling on my hands a good bit or trying to. I'm not giving her, I'm not making contact, give her the opportunity, I'm not giving her something to pull against over here all right get right up my right hand in case she goes too fast let's go faster actually she's rating pretty good 
Can you tell what breed she is? Oh, now she spit up. So one of the things, there are a couple of things that I'm feeling here. Very heavy on her front end. Not using her back end like she needs to. Wonder how many comments I'm gonna get that she's lame. It's gonna be funny to read through those. She needs to push better with her back end. Let's get some steering, let's steer to the left. Really, I'm beginning to think that the biggest thing this horse just needs is to be better fit, ridden regular, taught some good habits, and get a little bit better fit. A little bit of the right leg there, a bit of left rein. I'm not going to let you pull on my hands. Right leg, left hand. We'll change directions. Keep going, keep going. Left hand, right leg. She's not bringing her shoulders around when I steer with my hands. That's why I'm pushing with my legs. Now it'll be, come on. Right hand, left leg, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Almost getting the opposite effect to what I expected. Don't have much go. I expected to get on her and have her run off with me. Left leg. She is definitely not engaging her back end. The reason she's not steering with her shoulders is because all her weight is on her shoulders. She can't steer right when all her weight is on that leg. A horse should be just like a truck, steer in the front and push in the back. This one is steering like she's front wheel drive, she's pulling in the front and she has her positive traction locked in. Okay, so that gives me a good idea what I got to work with. Not exactly what I was expecting, but I can help her for sure. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna stop here for today. Next time I'm a rider with spurs, work on lifting her middle up, steering her shoulders, getting her shoulders to steer, asking her to engage with the back end. That's going to get her steering better. That's going to get her... You going to try to bite me? Good girl. That's going to get her steering better. That's going to get her pushing better in the back end. And that's going to get all of it better. She's got several things going on because of how she's carrying herself. She's unfit for one thing, and with all her weight on the front end, when you go to stop, she's gonna just bog down. You saw how she's kind of putting her head down, pulling on my hands. If I go to pull to stop, she's going to just plow my hands down. I'm not gonna work on the hands, I'm gonna work on the body. When I work on the body, her pushing on my hands is gonna take care of herself. So this is Jazz. Uh, I'll tell you in the next video what uh, breed she is. If you think you know, put it in the comments down below. I'll have a playlist for her so you can watch her as she comes along if you're watching on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for watching.